Best new thing in the world today. Okay, the city of Washington, D.C., not the federal government, not the Beltway, but the city itself, Washington, comma, District of Columbia, it's kind of a low-slung place. Most of the buildings in Washington, D.C. are short by law. Because D.C. is governed by the U.S. Congress, the law in D.C. that says buildings in D.C. have to be short buildings is a law that was passed not by the city itself, but by Congress in 1910, an act to regulate the height of buildings in the District of Columbia. 1910, Congress passed that. More than a century is a long time to have your city stay short while the rest of the world is putting up skyscrapers. But in D.C., that century-old decision by Congress created a city skyline like no other, one where you can see the great federal monuments of our nation from a long ways away, because there are no tall buildings in the way blocking your view. I don't know why they did it in the first place back in 1910, but the overall effect after all these years of those height restrictions, it's kind of an architecturally democratizing thing. Nothing stands between anyone in D.C. and, say, the Washington Monument. Rich people have that view, poor people have that view, and it isn't something to trade on because D.C. height restrictions are permanent. They've been there for more than a century, so nobody was ever going to take away that view. Two years ago, in August 2011, a rare East Coast earthquake rattled the Washington Monument so hard that they've had to close it off from visitors ever since. The earthquake cracked the marble on the Washington Monument. You could see sunlight from inside. Then came torrential rain and wind from Hurricane Irene that same month. The rain got in, left pools of water inside the monument. Teams of people who are way braver than I am rappelled down the sides of the Washington Monument to survey the damage after the earthquake. They found four separate big cracks that needed repairing. Uh-oh. This is going to take a while. First they had to make a plan, then they had to figure out how to pay for it, then it took them four months just to get the scaffolding in place. But here's the thing. When the National Park Service finished the scaffolding part of the job back in July, when they finished the 6,000 pieces of metal rigged to stand as scaffolding around the monument without touching it, and they lit up that scaffolding with 500 lights, when they hit the lights that showed off the new scaffolding around the monument and the way the monument looks while it's wrapped up in that scaffolding, it was kind of unexpectedly awesome in its own right. Yeah, we have this beautiful monument, but now, just for a while, we have this beautiful monument like wearing a really nice dress. Some people in Washington have even argued that the scaffolding looks so good on the Washington Monument, we should just make it permanent. A senior editor at Architect Magazine argued in the Washington Post that the monument, quote, hasn't looked so good in years. Lit up like a spectral tower, it now has a new civic purpose. Because Americans broadly agree that governance in this nation is broken, there's a casual elegance to the symbolism of a monument to national unity under construction. We are a work in progress, the cracked memorial reminds us. Our union is not perfected. Reinvention is like that. You get to see an old thing in a new way for a while. And no, they are not planning on making the scaffolding permanent on the Washington Monument. Sometimes next spring, uh, they'll finish the work on Washington's old obelisk and we will get our plain old white marble monument back without its fancy dress on. But just today... Best new thing in the world. Today, we got news of another chance for reinvention in our national capital. This is the U.S. Capitol Dome, the huge, ornate, cast-iron dome that covers and somehow constrains the uncontainable U.S. Congress. The Capitol Dome has not been renovated in more than 50 years, and as a result, it is rusting out. Iron gets rusty. The Capitol Dome is rusty. They say they found 1,300 cracks so far that they know about, and in some cases, it's letting water seep into the building. Our Capitol Dome looks great from a distance, but up close, it's cracking. We have big chunks of it falling apart and rusting out and at risk of falling off. Today, they announced that the work to make this right is about to begin. And in order to start the work, the architect of the Capitol will start next month wrapping the dome in scaffolding. The Capitol dome is getting its party dress too, and it gets to wear it all lit up for two years. And so, hooray, this is overdue. Desperately needed work can finally get going. So the U.S. Capitol building doesn't literally fall in on itself and kill people. And if the Washington Monument is anything to go by, there is a chance that the process of the Capitol getting its new updo might itself be cool. It might be a very pretty process. The Capitol is going to be reinvented for us while the work goes on. And if there's any place in America that needs reinventing and reimagining more than this place in America, I don't know of it. 
What is broken does not have to stay that way. Reinvention is possible. And you might even enjoy the process and be newly inspired along the way. Best new thing in the world today.